Name at least one change and or conflict in our community that you've noticed that you would like to get involved in and help become a part of the resolution. One change I'd like to see is more economic development on the uh, east part of town, the Tepos area. Um, and, and, well, basically, it, it's, it's been forgotten the last, well, since the corporation has been overlooked. A lot of the businesses are going on 347. So we need more economic development, period, in the city. But I'd like to see more on the east side of town. Um, my whole thing that wanting to be involved is my family, the community. I'm already involved in the community with many different aspects through our fire department with the community first response team through my church and Boy Scouts of America. I see this advantage of a person who's coming with the skills I have as a national consultant in and bringing my views from the business world into the city. The um, city of Maricopa, as many of you know, is impacted by floodplains from several sources. And while that's true, they are studying Santa Cruz and looking at a solution there, um, that solution is mostly going to impact uh, the developers along the Santa Cruz. What I'm more concerned about are the homeowners. The homeowners who are still in the flood plain that um, have to pay high flood insurance. That's just not acceptable. The change is not going to change. And the way on this pressure to develop is extremely important to all of us. That's what we've been working on for the past eight years. We've expanded our economic development department so that it has more knowledge. So we got to do it all the time. Plus, I'm employed very quickly to have development alliance, which spends great money, corporate money, to expand economic development. And we also spend time trying to express people with interest in it. So I'm involved in economic development. Very good. And what I would do is see a huge problem here in the city of Maricopa are services for veterans. I work in the Valley, I work in the, um, for ASU as a veteran coordinator, and I have to tell you that the services over there are abundant in Maricopa County, except for Pinal County. We have 4%, which, I'm sorry, 10%, 4,000 veterans in this community, and they don't have the proper services. And if you ask me what I can do to change, that's what I would do. Well, I think I'm going to take the thing that they were at 347 because that is very, very critical. I travel that road just as many do um, every single day back and forth, and I understand the challenges. Well, believe it or not, there was a study done in late 2015 in Maricopa, the area transportation plan phase one, that indicated that State Route 347 was going to be the beginning stages of gridlock in 2017. What would it take to open a business of your type and size in Maricopa? What conditions need to change and how do you feel the council can help us? That's a great question. Um, well, so let me just talk about my business first. For those of you who don't know what I have, right? I own a shooting range in Mesa and another shooting range in Tempe. Both of those facilities each individually draw from approximately between three and 600,000 people. Uh, to be sustainable, one of which, the one in Mesa, is sustainable and doing okay. We employ 30 people there, and, and we're really hard to make sure that they stay employed. And you sometimes you're creative. That's what you do with every hope in doing these things, that your constituents realize that, respond quickly. Other than that, what else do you do? That's what you need, that's the person does. You respond to needs as they come up. And you work very productively with others who come to us. That's what I've done. That's what I continue to do. Um, while I was on council for one and a half years, I had a full time job at a college. I had a part time job as a realtor. I served as the commander of the American Legion Post for a year. I also served on different committees and organizations, the Optimist Club and every organization. And most people could vouch that I was present at almost every meeting. I missed two meetings, one for my son's graduation, and one because I had a, a surgery that I could not recover from that meeting. So after four and a half years, I missed two. You had mentioned what we, we you had mentioned family. Our family time takes a toll, and every council member who's ever served, they know that. And please take into consideration that all these individuals up here have families. When we hear things, we just shake them off and walk away. But when our family listens to the trash that's posted out there sometimes, keep in mind that some of us have young children that have to deal with that kind of stuff. Uh, I just make, I'll make the time. It's, uh, my time is flexible. I, I own my own business. I work right here in town. Uh, 
It's just, it's just what I do, as the saying goes. Uh, I, I, I love this community, and I'm involved right now in many aspects, and I've been involved for a long, long time, and that doesn't change. And when I was on the city council, it was, it was not a problem for me to do that. And, and now being, uh, having the two years of experience that I've had, I already know what to expect, and I think it'll, it'll be enhanced, and I have the opportunity to help out even more. I've received over 100 emails and phone calls over the last two years, if you can believe that or not. And I've listened and responded and taken action when needed. So I'm very responsive to our public, enjoying serving the city of Maricopa, and hope to continue doing so for four more years. Many of you know 80% uh, of us actually go into uh, the Phoenix area or Chandler area to work. So every day we get on the Maricopa 347 and have to drive in there. And when there's an accident, we all get stuck. I've had as late as three hours on employment because of that. There's no notification system at the entrance of Maricopa or the exit of Maricopa that tells us if there's an accident. Uh, there's no uh, early notification system that is uh, reliable here in Maricopa, so that would be a change I'd like to see. Some sort of community notification system on transportation, that's immediate. Long term, work with the surrounding partners, work with MAG, Maricopa County to widen 347 and to increase other routes into Maricopa. That's been a discussion, uh, which Councilman Smith will say when she gets back on that, I'm sure. There's been discussion amongst the council and the mayor and city manager about looking into that, right? Because that was, that's been something that we've been talking about since the strategic plan, the last strategic planning meeting. Um, and I, I'm for looking into it. But one thing that I want to make everybody clear about is if that in fact goes forward, that does not necessarily guarantee that the rates will be lower, right? There is a potential that we would have to raise the rates and upset everybody else. So I'm not necessarily for acquiring the facility at this particular moment, but I'm, I'm, I'm darn sure interested in looking into the feasibility. Thank you. So, um, yes, I also work from home. I own my own business here in Maricopa, so I'm able to set my own schedule as well. Um, so I have the flexibility to do that. I can meet with anybody that I want to I recognize that being on the council does take a large amount of time. It's more than just showing up to meetings twice a month. We have meetings that, uh, that you have to have to go to for various committees, uh, have to go to budget meetings, you have to go to meetings with uh, state officials, etc. So there is a huge time commitment there. Uh, I am the president of the Blood Control District here in Maricopa. And I made time for that um, as well. I'm able to meet with uh, the board there at a moment's notice. 